Hey, welcome back to Tiny House and Off Grid Resources. Two days ago, I had a message from a subscriber by the name of George. Now, George said that he was just cutting the steel to make himself the suspension on a set of independent trailing arms, much the same as I've done on this trailer. George, I'd be really keen to keep seeing updates of your trailer as you carry on. In this video, I'm going to be showing you all the measurements and finer details of how I made this independent rear suspension. So come with me, let's get underneath and we'll have a look at how this was done. The positioning of the shock absorber in relation to the hub face depends on the negative or positive offset of your wheel. It's best to have a positive offset because a negative offset pushing the wheel inwards means that your strut shock tower needs to be in, uh, intruding into your camping space, your sleeping space. I used Subaru Forester rear shocks and th the weight of my trailer is 660 kilos. They're a little soft, I should have gone just a fraction heavier in the springing, but it rides beautifully. Length of the swing arm is 440 centre to centre. Length of the shock absorber in the fully extended position is 490. Length of shock absorber in the fully compressed position is 340. The angle here is 90 degrees when it's at rest. As it compresses, that angle changes by 5 degrees, by nearly 5 degrees. The width of the two pivot points apart from each other is 320 centre to centre. The lengths of the bosses here that I've put the bushes into is 80 millimetres and that was made out of one and a half inch thick wall steam pipe turned out very slightly by something like only 20 thou to take the bushes which you'll find details of in my video that tells you about the nolothane suspension. The brakes, they are trail parts electric brakes. They have a mechanical handbrake, which is wonderful on an off-road trailer because so often you want to leave it to take the car and you're on uneven ground that it could roll away. The handbrake stops that. The brakes are fully adjustable via Bluetooth from your phone inside the vehicle, although you seldom need to touch them. It's really only a bit of wank playing with them. You don't need to. Once they're set, they're set. Unless, of course, you're varying the weight dramatically in the trailer. The materials I've used for these arms, I didn't go as heavy as some people do. Now the axle tube 
is 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter square and with that I did use the six millimeter quarter inch heavy wall because it has to be that size for the stub axle to be a good fit into it. The arms, I've used the same material that I've used for the perimeter on the chassis rails. It's a two millimeter thick wall and the dimensions of these bars are Sixty-three mil by thirty-eight millimeter. The mounting points that the suspension pivots from are made from five millimeter plate, which is three sixteenths, I believe. The bolts are sixteen millimeter bolts, so that's five eighths high tensile bolts, and I've left enough room around the heads here. For if this ever takes a big tweak and these have to be adjusted to get it back into spec, I'll be able to drill these holes out to oversize, weld a small piece on and put an eccentric washer in there and I'll be able to get toe in, toe out and camber adjustment through turning those, just like on the more expensive ones. I could have done that from new but I didn't see the need to do it unless I was to have a nasty tweak at some stage. So how good is this suspension? Quite honestly, you could deliver crystal vases on this trailer. It's beautifully soft and compliant. The only way I can fault it is that it lacks a little bit of the roll resistance that a normally sprung trailer would have. Because it's independent, when you go into a big 60 mile an hour sweeping corner, it does get on a little bit of body roll. That could be fixed by either stiffening the springs or putting in an anti-sway bar across the two. And I don't know which I will do yet. Well, thanks to George Tafferty for asking that question. And I hope that my answer has been a help to anybody else who wants to know more details about how to build these A-arm suspensions. Now one thing that makes them better, that doesn't really change any of the geometry, is lengthening the swing arm. I should have made this a little bit longer because it goes through less of an arc if the arm is longer. But of course in such a short trailer I didn't have the room to do it. On bigger trailers, if you can get longer arms in, you'll get a smoother range of movement. and it doesn't change the actual springing ratio. Your springing ratio is only changed by the distance from the bottom of the shock absorber to the center of the axle. If they're above each other, it's one to one. As they move away from each other, it either gets heavier if you move it towards the pivot point or softer if you move it away from the pivot point. <laughs>